Hey friends, welcome back to day number 14 and today we're going to learn how to create the holiday credit building blocks. So let's go right into the pay policies and last time we've seen how to create the holidays and today we're going to focus on how to create the holiday credit rule building blocks. Now the, the two, build, two building blocks that you see under holiday credit rule are optional. One of them is the contributing shifts and the other one is the work history qualifiers. But the one that is mandatory is the holiday credit rule. And this holiday credit rule is for the, the pay code that you want to define for the particular holiday, holiday that we have defined earlier. Say for example, the, the next holiday you may have is a Good Friday or Memorial Day or Labor Day. So for a Good Friday or Memorial Day, uh, on the time card, if you remember the time card grid, it will show on that particular day the holiday as Good Friday. But at the bottom, when you have the total section there, if you want to define uh, the the pay code for for work for the holiday, then you can define that pay code in the holiday credit rule. So that because you are not working on that day, it's a public holiday, so you do not work on that day. However, you still will get eight hours for that holiday. Uh, as defined in the holiday credit rule. Having said that, if your um, customer or client has a requirement saying that the holiday credit hours you will get only if you um, have worked for let's say a minimum of 15 shifts in the last 30 days and each shift should be at least for six hours. So if this kind of requirement are there, mostly um, you might not come across this requirement, but you never know one of your customer can have maybe some union uh, regulations they would be there or some union rules will be there which you need to abide by with so you might have to create these two building block which is the contributing shifts and the work history qualifiers so today on day number 14 we are going to see how to create the contributing shifts and work history qualifiers again as i said these are optional building blocks for scenarios as i just mentioned Again, I will let you know the scenario. The scenario could be your customer might say that to get that holiday credit of eight hours, the employee should be working minimum of, uh, this is again an example, minimum of 15 shifts in the last 30 days. And each shift length should be minimum of six hours. For, so for the system to know the, the 30 days and the 15 days minimum shifts and the six hours, that is when you need to create these two building block. So let's go into the first one, which is the contributing shift and see what are the requirement under this. One of the mandatory requirement under contributing shift is the contributing pay code. So if, if you remember the scenario just that I mentioned a while ago, that the employee should be working for minimum of six hours each day, at least in the 15 shifts in the past 30 days. So for that reason, first thing that you need to create is the contributing pay code. Typically, the, the shift that you do is captured in the regular pay code. So let's go first and create the contributing pay code. And in order to create the contributing pay code, we will go right into the pay code section. And right here, you have the contributing pay codes. So let's create one. And I will say regular. And uh, the selection is already there by default, which is contributing shift. And from the list, just select the regular pay code. So what we are saying is the six hours that employee will need to work, that will be tracked under regular. So, and this contributing pay code will be used in the contributing shift. So you have to make sure that you put a check mark here. And once you are done, click on save and return. Now let's go right into the contributing shifts. And in the contributing shifts, the first thing that you will do is define the name. And I'm going to give the same name, contributing shift. And how many days the system needs to look back? The system needs to look back 30 days, right? So you can say 30 days. And what should be the minimum shift length? The minimum shift length should be six days. And now which pay code is going to hold this six? Uh, sorry, the minimum shift length to be sh should be six hours and this six hours will be tracked in the regular pay code, which we have just 
defined in the contributing pay code okay so the contributing pay code is regular you can also club other pay codes if need be but generally this is the pay code that will hold your regular hours so we here we have defined the contributing shift which will look back 30 days and it will check for minimum of shift length of six hours and you can also define uh, specific days like you can say monday to friday so monday tuesday wednesday thursday and friday so this 30 days will actually be from monday to friday and i'm once i'm done i'm going to click on save and return and this contributing shift will be assigned in the work history qualifiers so let's open the work history qualifiers and name it as work history qualifier and the contributing shift that we just created we will assign that here and if you remember our requirement was employee should be working minimum of 15 days right minimum of 15 shifts rather so you can select that minimum 15 shifts so here is the minimum number of shifts and then max minimum number was 15. so by this our requirement is met that is minimum number is 15 shifts and in the past 30 days which will be in the contributing shift and each shift should be for minimum of six hours and that is something that we've already defined in the contributing shift so these are the um, the two building blocks which you may come across at times so you now know how to create them in the next video uh, tutorial i will show you how you can assign this and where you can assign this these two are will be assigned in the holiday credit rule building block which we will see in the next video tutorial so i want to create this in a separate session because these are optional ones so you know how to create them separately if it, if need be um, so stay tuned for the next video which will be on the holiday credit rule if you have any questions comments clarifications put that down in the comment section thank you for watching